Hi, my name is Pia. I'm the creative director of LPA and the host of Pia's Pod. Welcome to Way's YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to tell you how I did it my way. The first thing every morning I wake up and make an espresso for my husband and then I make one for myself. And then I walk over to my vanity and start a pretty chill but kind of arduous morning routine, including supplements, products, hair stuff, and a little bit of makeup. What motivates me professionally is the connection that I have with women who buy and wear LPA and the people who listen to the podcast. I feel like I have a huge network of like a tribe and like a family of people that I don't necessarily know, but I feel like I'm a part of like a large group of this like really beautiful sisterhood. When I was first getting started, I think the hardest part was trying to figure out like who the LPA woman was. Um, you have an idea of like the clothes you want to make and what they should be but then when they go live in the world and you see how they fit people and get that kind of feedback now i feel like you know we make clothes on a monthly basis they're great it's like a really beautiful process but before i was super nervous thinking about whether or not anybody actually liked anything or would wear it i wish that i knew when i started all of this to be a little bit more prepared for getting a bunch of mean opinions that actually don't matter <laughs> instead of being really sensitive about it, knowing that mean people just don't have a place in my world. Um, I think the biggest misconception about me is that I'm like an influencer who got a brand, but I was been a designer. I went to Parsons Design School for four years, just almost graduated, <laughs> and worked for multiple really respected companies for 10 years before LPA came to fruition. So I think that's a huge misconception because I think if you were going to give an influencer a brand, it would be somebody who had more than just 100,000 followers, right? I'm most proud of my family life and my commitment to my family. My husband and I moved into my childhood home a couple months ago um, after my father passed away. We didn't want my mom to live alone or have to sell the house. So we took over a lot of the responsibility and are hoping to grow our own family in here and make sure that my mom is comfortable and can like have a nice life. In moments where I feel uncontrollably overwhelmed, I, sc I like have I like scream in my car. Come here, Nina. Oh, I'm also really proud of saving Nina. She's a deaf pit bull. We got her on death row. Nobody wanted her because she can't hear anything. But she is an angel girl. I do not feel the need to do a million things very well because I don't believe in that. Neither does my husband. And you should focus on the one thing that you're doing. Otherwise, you're not doing anything fully, right? So we try to live a life that's like, now we're doing this, and now we're doing that, and not cross those things, which is very hard, but that's where you learn to set up boundaries for yourself and with other people. Honestly, something that keeps me performing at a high level is only ingesting food that makes my body function properly. If I eat crap and over drink, which I do sometimes, by two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not like a functioning professional. So when I work out in the morning and I eat clean and I focus on taking care of my body, my body becomes like a high performance machine and my work grows exponentially. Can you sit? Sit. Don't hurt me. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. That's how you say good girl to a deaf dog. Good girl. I am the youngest of five of a combined family. My father was a shit-talking big football player who loved to cook but was also a dentist and oil painted. So he was a true renaissance man. My mom is a little angel woman from Denmark who was always cooking and 
preparing these like magical meals for all of us with my dad all the time. So there was a lot of chaos with lots of family members, but there was dinners here nonstop every Sunday, a lot of shit talking, a lot of good like emotional dramatic growth moments just with, you know, no breakups and school and getting into colleges. It was a very loving, dramatic, chaotic <laughs> home. <laughs> Mom, you're ruining everything. God damn it, why is this always happening? <laughs> Growing up in a home where if you act like an asshole, you get called out for being an asshole, there has allowed me to you know, be more like self-aware in work environments. We were all very competitive, mostly with ourselves, like a little bit with each other, but everyone had really big dreams in my home and everyone was really quick to call out the other person so you know being able to like navigate through work scenarios or like having like fearless to build brands or put myself out there was all because of how i was raised my dad always said like you are capable of literally doing absolutely anything. There was never any sort of discussion that happened where it made me, like I, he never said, oh, you have to be this or you need to finish college or you have to be a certain thing. You know, he encouraged me always to follow my heart, be a good person, work really hard. He was an incredibly, incredibly hard worker, but the only reason why I am where I am is because my dad said, move to New York and like we trust that you will end up exactly where you're supposed to be and just like follow your heart and whatever you do makes me proud. The only advice I ever give anyone is to stop thinking so formulaically. Like it doesn't matter what internship you have out of high school or like honestly, like what your major is in college, I think being exploratory and seeing what you like and don't like about fashion and about any career path in general will allow you to end up exactly where you are. I mean, think about how many people go to school to be like a lawyer and then they never even practice law. Life is like a nice ride. And so you kind of just, if you're genuine and you follow your gut and you follow these like little magical universal moments, like your aha moments, you end up exactly where you're supposed to be. Mom. We gotta figure out like what these, like who's or like I don't I I washed all these but I don't know who they belong to or where they go. Or which my job? Well, let's make. <laughs> no, <laughs> where are we at? Stop! I got it. It's not a two person job. Give it a shot. Do it. <laughs> you just told me to do it. No, can you just organize them? Like which ones go in your bathroom Give and which ones are for the guest no, bathroom? I'll figure it out. What, what do we do with all these lemons? I'm taking him to Joe's. We're making money. Jello. I'm Jello. Okay. <sighs> there might be other uses. Like <laughs> so we got married two days ago in the house in the backyard, exactly where my parents got married. And this is kind of like the leftover stuff. We kept their wedding photos up, which were in the front yard, obviously, is, you know, in homage to them. And then. My father passed away, so we had kind of kept everywhere he was. We put white roses. My nephew picked these lemons from my brother's tree. They were all over all the tables. They were everywhere. And the two days before the wedding, I opened this book I was going to throw away and found a letter from my dad saying, you are special. I love you for all you've done. I love how you live life to the fullest. You've worked so hard. You've done amazing things and will continue to do so. I love your deep feelings. You write what we feel. Thank you to my wonderful daughter. What she wrote in 2010, which I thought was a nice, a nice surprise that he gave me just a couple days before our wedding. When he wrote this, I was living in New York. I was, I was year five in New York and I was in the middle of what the fuck am I gonna do? 
and like I think working at People's Revolution, like not knowing if I wanted to do PR full time and was also like a waitress. I was very much in between a lot of stuff. So to to know that he was that proud of me in a moment where I was still thought that I was lost and didn't know what I wanted to do was really, really cool.